G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday morning here in Australia, so again, sort of Wednesday night, sort of stateside time, and the market is up 7%, so quite a bounce, uh, considering, you know, the news that's come, that has come out, and we'll look into that. But what I want to say is just, you know, proceed with caution. While there's lots of good news at the moment, I think the, there's going to be a battle uh, on, you know, coming that's going to... Uh, create all sorts of mayhem. Now again, I could be wrong, but we'll get into that shortly. But let's look at the market first. It's up seven. So sorry, up seven percent. That's really really good. Bitcoin dominance jumped straight up forty one percent. Like you know, it probably should have, and I think it'll likely gain for a little while. ETH dominance dropped a little bit, and gas prices are still super cheap. Uh, at 12 we really haven't seen that uh, since probably January I'd say and again we really want them to be in single digits but should the market fire up I guess we're going to find out and really see whether you know these layer 2 solutions are going to be able to keep it down uh, and also e e uh, EIP 1559 is due to come out in around about a month sort of time so we'll see if that makes a difference as well but let's have a look in the last 24 hours like it just looks like a sea of green at the moment still down over the last seven days and still uh, quite down particularly over the last I don't know let's say I don't know month or so anyway uh, things have been fairly brutalized but we can see some corrections happening from the lows and we'll get into that all right so what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Has anything really, really pumped? Yep, Bitcoin gold for some reason. God knows why. Kasama, that's uh, likely to do with the news about the parachains coming out. Parachain, bloody hell. Anyway, it's there. Amp, Arweave, Telcoin, Huobi. I mean, look, all kind of 15-ish percent gains. Bitcoin, I mean, had 12%, 12% in near. Neo, 12%, so very, very nice. Uh, yeah, some coins doing pretty well there. Not too bad. VeChain, good recovery. Uh, yeah, not too bad at all. All right, has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours? Because it looks pretty positive considering the total market cap is up 7%. All right, not really. So, all right, Leo token down, Theta Fuel down a little bit, Helium down just a tad, and then we're basically getting into the stable coins, and they're all up. <laughs> they're all trading at a dollar at the moment. So, look, again, overall pretty good. Now let's go and have a look at the the actual charts, and then again we're going to look at the news, and I'm going to go and I'm going to go into why I'm saying just proceed with a little bit of caution at the moment. It's you know the the news is kind of bullish, and the charts are looking a bit bullish, but some of the news has me concerned as well at the same time. All right, so let's go to the charts. All right, this will have to reset. All right, so and as I was saying, look, we did get. You know, again, we had this bullish divergence happening. Now, that low was lower, but now that has been preceded by this high. That has just broken over it. So if we get on there, it's, oh, I mean, they're almost identical, but I'd say this just pipped over it. So for the short term, this bearish divergence has been broken by this bullish divergence. Now, we need to wait and see. This is, you know, still, you know, it's, it's not the be-all and end-all, but then again, this looked like it was going to break uh, and turn bearish. But again, it's now gone the other way. But this is all in the short term at the moment. It doesn't mean, yeah, we're you know straight back into happy days and everything's going to be great. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of these for now because I really want to focus on this chart here. And we can get rid of this. We don't need the question mark. We know what's happened at the moment. But it still does... Uh, I could have possibly left it there really and I'll show you why because look this is the trend we broke out of it and again it was only for two days we've seen this previously in bull trends but then it jumped back in and got to the top now this is a very brand new day so it's only an hour in and we can already see that there is some resistance at this 37k level now again at the moment this is just chop soaring like I said we could easily still have another sell-off I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying it's something we need to keep in the back of our minds. Really, we need to break above 42,000 before you can really say that, you know, the, the you know, the bull market's are back on. And now, 
I'm not expecting that to happen overnight, but it could. As I said, I'm more likely thinking that we're just going to kind of chop sideways. Now, we might even chop sideways within this range again to kind kind of keep the, uh, you know, the bull market intact. But if we drop out of it, I don't think it's a bear market. I think we can chop sideways for a number of months and it doesn't mean that things are overly bearish it just means it's accumulation and again the market's still trying to work itself out so that's all i'm saying look things are feeling quite bullish at the moment and particularly when we get into the news there's a lot of bullish news but there is some bearish news and i'm probably going to start with that all right so number one we've got things like this fears of shady financial market prompt the cftc commissioner uh, calls for DeFi crackdown. So the interesting thing here is it says today the United States has the most effective and efficient capital uh, formation and risk management markets in the world. When people the world over want to invest their money or manage their risks in safe ways, they come to the US. Uh, they come to the US financial system. That's because they were the reserve world currency, and they kind of had no choice. Just how safe is it considering, you know, all the market manipulation that, uh, that has happened, uh, the, you know, printing of the US dollar to, you know, near infinity. So I think this is such a silly statement and, and even they know uh, that there's some truth to it. It's not complete and utter, you know, rubbish. The, the US, you know, financial system is the, you know, the hub of the world, really, sort of when it comes to financial systems, but they're far from, like, exactly safe uh, and fair. They definitely are not. They're safe and fair for the really big players who are all, you know, sort of in cahoots with each other, but for the average Joe, you try and go in there, you're going to get wrecked and all sorts of stuff, and it's not because you don't know how to trade, it's because these guys simply gang up uh, on the little guys that's what they do they want to keep that closed walled garden that they have now one of the key reasons for our financial system is so uh, our financial system is so strong is the legal protections that investors enjoy when they invest their money in u.s markets often uh, through intermediaries yeah yes and no we have a system in which intermediaries are legally accountable for protecting customers funds uh, I'm not so sure about that. I'm pretty sure there are a number of big banks that went bust and all the rest of it. Now, yeah, the government had to jump in uh, and bail them out and things like that. But in the end, that has to get paid back somehow. So, you know, the customers actually paid uh, more because their money was mishandled uh, back in 2008 and things like that. Lehman Brothers and all that kind of stuff. Now, it says here, here, we should not permit DeFi to become an unregulated shadow financial market in direct competition with regulated markets. Yes, you should. Now, not completely unregulated, but DeFi, it does need some regulation, but don't try and make it the system that we have. That system's broke and doesn't work. It hasn't been working for a long time. It has worked for the select few who, you know, again, have this walled garden where they protect each other and save each other, but they don't do that to the regular Joe. If me and you were to go in the markets and we were for some reason wrecked, it'd just be too bad, so sad. But these big, massive companies, banks and things like that, they get bailed out by the government, but me and you, we don't. And that's not just the US markets, that's markets all over. But the US markets are traditionally the biggest ones. So this is what we're up against. They are going to fight tooth and nail to try and do this. We can go over here. New York stand against Bitcoin mining passes Senate. So state legislators are concerned about the environmental impact of proof of work blockchains. This has already been dealt with. Bitcoin mining is predominantly green energy and it's moving more and more towards it. And so they just keep focusing on these few, you know, outliers that are using, you know, coal and all the rest of it. And I, I agree they need to move, but, you know, this, you know, these laws to try and ban it and things that, you know, they are kind of silly. They need to regulate it and make sure that Bitcoin mining is using green energy because of how much energy it uses absolutely agreed but you know to just try and buy it ban it that's just silly so new york legislators are digging in for a fight over bitcoin mining and it's not just bitcoin mining it's against bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in total that is what you need to remember bitcoin 
is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. They're all one in the same and they go hand in hand. Senate Bill S6486B, which restricts the granting of permits of Bitcoin mining operations on environmental grounds, passed the upper house by uh, a 36 to 27 margin. So it wasn't too far off though. The bill sponsored by Democratic Senator Kevin Parker now heads to the Democratic Controlled Assembly. So again, this is what's going on now. We can go over here, similar things happening in China. So China's, sorry, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Qinghai province has ordered all crypto miners to shut down, all of them. So very, very interesting. Now China's uh, Qinghai, hopefully I said that right, province has announced a ban on virtual currency mining operations. Qinghai is the latest coal-based crypto mining hub that is set to be uh, set to completely eliminate the industry. So again, I'm, I think this is still just around the coal-based ones. I think the ones using hydroelectric uh, should still be okay, but again, maybe something's changed. I couldn't find anything about that uh, when I was reading this uh, and looking on the net. So hopefully, you know, again, I don't have a problem with the coal-based stuff, fossil fuels, but as long as they're, you know, using hydroelectricity and wind and uh, solar and things like that, I think that should be uh, left alone. Now, the news came on the heels of another crackdown notice against some crypto miners in the Xinjiang, uh, miners in Xinjiang, and follows Inner Mongolia, which had previously uh, imposed restrictions on miners. So cryptocurrency is in a battle at the moment because I mean the big news is El Salvador has now passed uh, the legislation to legalize it so they were just talking about it but now it has been passed so it says here of 84 possible votes 62 lawmakers voted in favor of the bill while 19 opposed uh, opposed uh, and three did not vote so look the bill's been passed and it seems that a number of other South American countries are at least looking to follow suit. Whether they will follow suit or not, you know, is a completely different story, but they're looking to. And again, this will just be the first. This is, you know, it's really big. It's monumental for Bitcoin. It is finally being not just recognized because it was recognized a while ago as not a security. That was great, but legalized. And so now there is going to be a lot of institutions and things like that that are going to fight against it, particularly particularly banking uh, and people who are in that old system and they don't want these new systems, DeFi and things like that. It's not going to be, you know, just we're going straight to the moon from here. There's going to be lots of heavy-handed tactics coming in the not-too-distant future. I'm quite certain of it. Hence why I'm not saying, like, just pile into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies right now because we may still not be at the bottom and even if we are at the bottom, it's not just going to go to the moon overnight like that. That is not going to happen. There's going to be yeah, all sorts of things coming from, you know, governments that don't want it and things like that. And, you know, we can go on to that. Uh, where was it? Uh, here, sorry. Iran's president wants crypto laws and inst uh, instructions implemented as soon as possible. Now, this could be good and bad, but considering they were cracking down on Bitcoin miners uh, not that long ago, you know, it could be a little bit bad. But again, maybe they were fossil fuel miners. Now, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani discussed uh, cryptocurrencies at the most recent meeting of the government's Economics uh, Coordination Board and told participants that regulatory policy is needed to protect consumers. Now this part I'm alright, if it's legitimately to protect consumers, good, but it needs to be all consumers, not again just these walled garden systems that they have where they protect, you know, the big wigs, the big players, and the little guys can still get, you know, chewed up and spat out. Rahani believes the Iranian government should com uh, communicate the necessary laws and instructions as soon as possible so dishonourable crypto businesses are avoided and again i agree with those kind of sentiments but again we just need to make sure that this new financial system that we have coming through doesn't get turned into the old one that we have where again only the big wigs can really make all the money and you know they're protected and they you know get these little minor you know monetary slaps on the hand if they do anything wrong and whereas if we were to do anything wrong we'd probably lose everything and possibly end up in jail as well we don't want that kind of system so we go over here. There is bullish news though. Again, so 
Now, again, El Salvador, where they've already passed it, and now they're looking into, get this, mining Bitcoin uh, through volcanic energy. So Bitcoin is heating up. So many, uh, some may say, erupting as the Latin American country plans to tap energy from volcanoes for mining cryptocurrency. And this is where I think, you know, it's going to get really big again. You know, all this kind of green energy. I agree, cracking down on the fossil fuels and all that, we want to get rid of that completely. But as long as we give them a chance to go green, it shouldn't be just ban them in total. Now, in a Wednesday tweet from uh, the president of El Salvador, hopefully I say his name right, uh, Bukele, the president said uh, he would be instructing um, Minor Gill, the president of state-owned electricity company Lageo, to facilitate Bitcoin mining with very cheap, 100% clean, 100% renewable, zero uh, emission energy from the country's volcanoes. So again, look at that. It will happen uh, fairly quickly, that kind of stuff, uh, particularly over there. It's, you know, again, there's still going to be all regulatory stuff. Where it's not going to be all to the moon. You know, it'll be good for El Salvador because they've completely legalized it as legal tender. So things will happen and move fast there. And again, they are leaning towards the 100%, you know, renewable energy and all the rest of it. Other countries will take a little bit of time. So again, more bullish news though. So US major, sorry, US trading platform, Interactive Brokers are gonna offer cryptocurrency trading. So they wanna offer a, as a yet unnamed cryptocurrencies. So sorry, Interactive Brokers wants to offer as of yet unnamed cryptocurrencies to its traders. So they haven't said exactly which ones they're gonna do yet. So United States uh, foreign exchange company, Interactive Brokers will offer direct cryptocurrency trading to clients within months as a report. So again, there's still lots of things coming, but it all doesn't happen overnight. And again, there's gonna be all regulatory sort of stuff going on. There's gonna be countries that are still gonna try and fight it and aren't gonna to wanna to accept Bitcoin as legal you know, money, but they won't have a choice, particularly if other South American countries get onto this fairly quickly. Now that's just one little area, South America, it's not exactly the be all and end all to the world, but what happens next? What country outside of South America comes next? You wait for some, you know, kind of little country uh, in Asia or something like that, you know, like the Philippines or Myanmar or something like that, you know, some other little country to do it, and then another one does it. And it's that, you know, trickle, 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 before then it's just a big massive flood. And the interesting thing will be, like I said the other day, is imagine what happens when some big first world nation goes, Yep, Bitcoin's legal, and then they start, you know, mining it for themselves and wanting to own it themselves. Then the central banks start to follow, and that's when things will get really, really exciting. But I think there's going to be a lot of up and down and to and fro before that happens. It's not just going to be, again, the click of the fingers, and it happens overnight. I think there's, yeah, a battle to come. But look, again, long term, I am super bullish on cryptocurrencies and, you know, Bitcoin particularly, because it'll lead the way. All right, $160 billion asset manager entering crypto market in collaboration with the NASDAQ. All right, so Victory Capital will be the exclusive sponsor of private placement funds and other vehicles for US investors based on the NASDAQ crypto exchange, the NCI, a multi-coin crypto index co-developed by NASDAQ and Hashdex. So again, it, you know, it's not going to be banned. That is not going to happen. But there's just going to, there's going to be a lot of political upheaval, not upheaval, but political issues going on. Again, we already spoke about it. Now, micro strategy again. Even more bullish news. Good old Michael Saylor, what a champion! And look, he's probably done this at a great time, considering how low the prices are. Micro strategy boosts five hundred million dollar junk bond sale to buy more Bitcoin. So unlike Tesla, MicroStrategy has altered its stance on Bitcoin and is making moves to purchase more through the increasing of the size of corporate bond sale. Now the company, the company so uh, MicroStrategy, announced the pricing of $500 million of 6.1, 2.5% senior secured nodes to acquire additional Bitcoin. So they're only going for $500 million. Now according to Bloomberg, the, fine, the firm received about $1.6 billion in orders for the offering, including interest from a large number of hedge funds. So they're all happy to get in. 
Michael Saylor, I think he really will go down as one of the smartest investors in our generation. Again, it's not you know it's not guaranteed just yet like i said i still think there's going to be a lot of to and fro and up and down and all sorts of crazy stuff happening in this space but i i think they know they can't stop it it's just too big now it's you know like that small snowball you start at the top of a mountain and roll a small snowball down that mountain and it slowly starts to pick up traction and gets bigger and bigger and in the end, it gets so big that you just can't stop it and you've just got to basically, you know, get on board with it. It is a strange analogy for that one. Or get out the way and then sort of follow it down. And I think that's where Bitcoin is and particularly the cryptocurrency space. There is going to be all sorts of regulations that's going to come out. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be great. Uh, some of it's not going to be so good. And some of it's going to be, uh, you know, basically awful. And again, I just... I really hope that they don't try and make this system into the system that we currently have because that hasn't worked. You know, the fiat system and, you know, protecting, you know, the rich and so only the rich get rich and the poor stay poor. That system needs to go. We need to have a fair market where everyone has exactly the same uh, abilities, you know, and, and options and, yeah, not just, you know, protecting those with all the money. But anyway, that's, you know, more philosoph uh, philosophical sort of stuff. Right, crypto exposure protocols are on the agenda for global banking regulators. So again, this isn't bearish, this is kind of bullish. The Bank of International Settlements, Settlements has put cryptocurrency exposure protocols on its agenda. Now, on its agenda, that's all, not, you know, on its shit list. <laughs> the global banking body, body is seeking stakeholder op opinions on the best course of action on the issue of banks interacting with crypto assets so not trying to ban them how to interact with them this is what's happening it's coming but again it just won't be overnight detailing its crypto related plans the basel committee which is the primary global standard on matters concerning banking regulation and supervision agreed to hold a public consultation on cryptocurrencies there's going to be fight back on this i can i can assure you there's going to be banks that are just really against it and they're going to want to you know do everything they can to slow it down and you know heavily regulate it and again make it the old system that's i can guarantee you that's what will happen as part of the BIS press release, the committee announced that the public consultation was to ascertain viable protocols for crypto exposure for banks. So again, they're no longer you know, going to try and ban it and all the rest of it. They know they've got to get on board. Uh, it's it's uh, fate accompli, I think is how they say uh, that saying. You know, it, it's basically done now, not completely. There are things that can happen and governments can try and crack down and all the rest of it. But again, I, I think they can see the writing on the wall and they're you know, trying to get on board, uh, you know, as best they can without changing, again, that old system that they have too much. So indeed, after many years of the legacy finance industry ignoring crypto, several banks and financial institutions are pursuing greater interaction with Bitcoin and crypto assets in general. So again, there's lots of really, really bullish news at the moment. But again, there is some bearish news. We looked at that China banning uh, Bitcoin mining, New York banning Bitcoin mining, and hopefully it's just hopefully, sorry, it's just that fossil fuel stuff. I'm all right with that, but they need to give the companies that are using fossil fuels a chance to change over, not just you know say, all right, bang, you're banned. Uh, and look, there is also a lot of news that a number of these big uh, binding, uh, mining places, particularly over in China, are moving to the states uh, where they have cheap green uh, green energy. But again, there's cheap green energy in China as well. So you know, but it would be good to have not as much of the mining done in China. We want more of it done uh, outside of there. But likewise, we don't want then 50% of it all done in uh, the USA either. We, we want you know it to be spread around the world and no one kind of have you know that majority holding of it. All right, again, so things are looking good, but you know it, it's not over yet, and I still wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more sideways action before we get any major uh, moves to the upside. Uh, but again, you know, it's got you know sitting on the fence. Typical me. But we could have downside and we still could have some heavy downside to down about here, even lower. Now it's Thursday uh, here in Australia, so the weekend's coming. We have a general weekend retracement. Uh, so again, just beware. I'm not saying that we're going to have one, but most of the time we do. 
and I don't know exactly how low it's going to go, if it goes low at all. We could have a weekend where it just pumps straight through, but then a CME gap, get, then a CME gap gets created, and they generally fill as well. All right, that's it from me. So my question to you at the moment, or for today I should say, is do you think cryptocurrency is going to have a big battle on its hands or do you think you know all the governments and everything they're just going to kind of fold and just get straight on board my gut feeling is there's going to be a lot of uh, to and fro and it's going to be a bit of a battle before they win i think they win uh inevitably uh and overall but yeah it's just going to take some time love to know your thoughts down below just put battle or no battle that's all i need you to put down below and please hit that like button if you've watched my video and enjoy uh, my content all right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment because things look pretty good, uh, at least in the short term. And I'll see you next time.